Hello again. This is uh, your brother Bill Vigu and Pastor Bill Vigu of Meet of the Word Ministries. Hopefully, a uh, supplemental pastor to you. I don't want to replace your pastor or your church, but I do want to share as an obedient child of God the things that he has been teaching me over the years. Now, this is number 29 in a series that I've been teaching in regards to feeding your faith and starving your fears. And in Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to talk about two people today that teamed up together to do what seemingly was impossible. The man was Barak, and there was a woman by the name of Deborah. Now, Deborah was the judge of Israel for many years, and she also um, was a prophetess. Now, this is important because there's two things that had taken place. The judge before her, I think his name was Elihu or something like that, he was an evil judge. And, and the number one problem he had was he took religion away from, you know, the children of Israel. Now, that's just really what's happening today in our world. The, the voices of the world are trying to take religion and church and gathering together and, and quenching the belief in God totally. And that's evil. It's called evil. It's identified as evil. So that was the main challenge that Deborah had. Secondly, they had the struggle of seemingly an impossible odd or odds, impossible odds. Now, Deborah, as the judge, calls upon this man, Barak. And we can only understand this if we read the story. It's found in Judge chapter 4. I encourage you to read it because Hebrews chapter 11 just mentions them as great heroes of faith. There's no doubt about it. But let's identify their faith. Let's tell their story. It will build your faith. Now, Deborah calls upon uh, uh, Barak, but she doesn't command him to do anything, but rather she knows something, being a prophetess, that she knew that God had spoken to Barak to, uh, has not God commanded you to, uh, and where and how to fight this battle to, to free Israel? And, uh, and he responds immediately, yeah, sure, but I'm not going to go up and do it unless you go with me. So she agrees to go with him. So the two of them team up. And she, uh, God had told Barak to take 10,000 men from just two tribes of Israel to come against what Judges uh, chapter 4 says was the king or the ruler of uh, Caesarea, uh, Jabin was his name, who had 900 chariots. Josephus, the historian at that time that wrote about this, actually said it was, you know, you know, 3,000 chariots, ironclad chariots. Now, uh, this was not just one person in, a, in a, a chariot with a couple of horses, but this was a team of men. So they were absolutely outnumbered. There was no way for them to be able to win this victory, but God had let him know, Barak and Deborah, that uh, they, he was behind him, and he was going to bring them in, into a place, a Mount T T uh, Tabor, draw that army out, and you were going to defeat them. Now, Barak had to fight, or Barak had to fight, and they won that war. Impossible. And you, you want to read that story, but again, impossible odds, but great faith actions. Now, you know, we talk about faith. It's important for us to understand that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, the invisible or the spiritual realm, that God is with you. You need to know especially in the day and hour that you're living in, what God wants you to do, and then you go fulfill your duty. God will back you up and do impossible things, but you've got to be ready to take action. And that's how why we want to build your faith in God. The more you hear about uh, these faith stories, the more you hear about the Word of God and what it has to say, the greater your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So I want to encourage you, Judges chapter 4, read that story. Read about what they did to overcome the obstacles, to quench their fears and strengthen their faith and act in faith and get tremendous results. We need those tremendous results in our world today. God bless you.